Welcome to lecture 13 on the topic of plant hormones, part 1. This lecture is the last lecture in this subject. This subject, plant physiology, is offered as a component of the agricultural and viticultural degree programs offered at NMIT. Please refer to the recommended reading from Tays and Zeiger, which starts at chapter 19 and goes through to chapter 24. My name's Dr Nikki Cooley. We will present the topic on plant hormones today in three parts. In part one, we will cover an introduction to plant hormones and hormone classifications, their generic role in plant growth and development. Then we will look at the hormone group auxin, one of the most important hormone groups. We will learn about auxin and its role, its biosynthesis and movement and function in plants. In part two, we will look at the topics of gibberellin, role and function, and cytokinin, role and function, and their interaction with other hormones. In the final part of this lecture, part three, we will look at ethylene and ascorbic acid, ABA, and brassinoid steroids. We will start this topic on plant hormones with a definition of, of a hormone. A hormone is a chemical messenger produced in one cell that regulates the process in another cell by interacting with protein receptors which are linked to cell pathways. Chemical messages are required for the efficient communication among cells, tissues and organs in plants. In plants, regulation and coordination of metabolism, growth and morphogenesis depends on chemical signals. There are six major categories of hormones in plants. These are auxins, gibberellins, cytokinins, ethylene, abscipic acid, and brassinosteroids. There are also other signaling molecules, such as jasmanic acid, sicilic acid, some small proteins, stritoglatone, and flavonoids. So let us explore each of these classifications of hormones in more detail. It is perhaps fitting that we should start with auxin, as this was the first plant hormone discovered. Auxin has been found to function in every aspect of plant growth and development. Auxin works alongside cytokinin and these hormones differ from other hormones as they are required for a vari variety of plant embryos. In the, 19, in the 1800s, Charles and Francis Darwin studied plant growth processes. This was called tropism. The Greek tropis means to turn. This process, caused by differential growth, is called phototropism. Using the canary grass seedling, the interaction of auxin and plant growth and development can be explored. After emergence from the seed, the canary grass has very young leaves and these are sheathed or protected by an organ called the coleoptile. The coleoptile is highly sensitive to blue light. If you illuminate on one side, the coleoptiles will bend or grow towards the light source within an hour. The tip of the coleoptile perceived the light for it covered with foil. The coleoptile would not bend. Therefore, it was concluded from this research that some signal is produced in the tip, travels to the elongation zone, causing the shaded side to grow faster than the illuminated side. This observation was published in 1881 in The Power of Movement in Plants. The figure on the slide illustrates some of the experiments that were conducted on coleoptiles by both Darwin and Boyce and Jensen. These experiments demonstrate the role of the tip and the, ke the chemical messenger auxin and how this relates to um, plant growth thereafter. It was experiments conducted by Fritz Wentz in 1926 on the 
tips of oak coleoptiles that went some way towards the discovery of auxin. He enabled a major breakthrough in the isolation of the chemical with his clever experimental design. He allowed the chemical to diffuse out of the excised coleoptips directly into gelatin blocks he had placed. The gelatin blocks were placed on one side of the decapitated coleoptiles and they could be tested for their ability to promote bending in the absence of light. This substance we now know as auxin. The visual representation on the slide shows a summary of Wendt's experiments. It also shows some of the results and the conclusions that he was able to draw. Auxin was discovered in the 1930s. The major natural auxin is called indole-3-acetic acid, or IAA for short. There are other auxin forms that exist, for example, for chlorine IAA, which was discovered in peas. IBA was discovered in maize and legumes. The synthetic auxins used in herbicides in agriculture and horticulture are called 2,4-D and dyscampia. 2,4-D was released in 1946 and was the first selective successful herbicide. It kills broadleaf plants, not cereals including wheat, rice or corn. It causes uncontrolled, unstable growth. Dicampia causes uncontrolled growth in plants until nutrient supplies are exhausted and then the plant dies. The biosynthesis of auxin is often associated with rapidly dividing and growing tissues, especially in shoots. The shoot apical meristem, or SAM, and young leaves are the primary sites of auxin synthesis. Root apical meristem, or RAM, is also synthesizes auxin, although most of the auxin derives from the shoot. IAA is related to the amino acid tryptophan, which can act as a precursor for IAA biosynthesis. Auxin, or IAA, moves from the main apical to the basal end. This is called basopedally. This undirectional transport is termed polar transport. The image on the slide summarises the movement of IAA. Auxin was discovered as the hormone involved in the bending of coleoptiles towards light. This results from unequal rates of cell elongation on the shaded side versus the illuminated side. Auxin is transported basepetally in the vascular parenchyma of the shoots, then moves laterally to the outer shoot tissues. The process of lateral auxin transport is mediated by PIN transport proteins. Auxin can cause a staggering 10-fold increase in plant growth rate in only 10 minutes. So how does it do this? Well firstly we need to review the role of cell elongation. Osmotic uptake in water driven by water potential gradient. Turga pressure increased due to rigid cell wall. Cell wall loosening occurs, then allowing expansion. Auxin has been found to increase the wall extensively by increasing the rate of proton exclusion or wall acidification. This increases in acidity promotes the activity of expansion proteins, which then loosen the cell wall. Auxin is involved in the actions of three plant tropisms. Phototropism, which is the growth with respect to light, is expressed in all of the shoots and roots. It ensures that leaf, leaves receive optimal light. Geotropism is growth in response to gravity. This enables roots to grow downwards and shoots to grow up. Critical response during germination. Thymagtropism is where growth with respect to touch enables root to grow around obstacles and the ability of some shoots to wrap around structures for support. When dark grown oat seeds are orientated horizontally, 
for coleoptiles bend upwards in response to gravity. Auxin is transported laterally to the lower side, causing the lower side to grow faster than the upper side. And this explains the mode of action of gravitrophism. So how do plants detect gravity? Well, the main candidates are the large, dense aminoplastids or starch-containing plastids. They are high, highly dense and relative to the cytosol, so their sediment falls to the bottom of the cell. The aminoplastids that function as gravity sensors are known as statholiths. Auxin has many developmental effects. These include apical dominance, floral bud development, leaf ar arrangement, lateral root formation, vascular development, leaf abscission, and fruit formation. In most plants, the growing apical bud inhibits the growth of the lateral buds. This is known as apical dominance. Removal of the shoot apex results in the growth of auxiliary buds. Auxin can stimulate the apical bud in maintaining the inhibition of lateral buds. Classic experiments were performed on kidney bean plants in the 1920s to demonstrate apical dominance. The figure on your screen illustrates the apical dominance experiments, showing the terminal bud intact, the terminal bud removed, and auxin added to uh, stems that had been decapitated. And this brings us to the end of the lecture on plant hormones.